Here on Monday, November 2nd, 2015. I am Dave Biddle, and I am joined by Steve Hellwagon. Steve, of course, JT Barrett was cited early Saturday morning for misdemeanor OVI. He was stopped at a DUI checkpoint near campus. He blew a 0.99 on the breathalyzer. Urban Meyer has suspended him for the Minnesota game this week. We'll get a chance to chat with Coach Meyer today at 11.45 a.m., Steve, the biggest question around Buckeye Nation right now seems to be, is one game enough? In college football in general, you see a lot of people out there debating it. Is one game enough for a DUI slash OVI, in your opinion? Yes, it seems that uh, given all of the circumstances, that uh, one game seems to be kind of what uh, is the standard, I guess, across college football for something like this. Uh, you know, these things do crop up from time to time across the country in different programs. and. Uh, Typically, it's a one-game suspension for a first-time offender. I think if you get into where someone is a repeat offender or is uh, truly egregious or truly flagrant, I mean, he, as you said, was just over what would be the legal limit for an adult or a 21-year-old and up in the state of Ohio, even though he's 20 years old. It was not, you know, as you hear with some DUI cases, uh, you know, well past the legal limit or double the legal limit. So um, I guess there's varying degrees to this. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's probably the right thing. Um, you know, I, when we were discussing it internally, uh, I hearkened back, you know, I, I'm, I'm old enough to remember what happened uh, 14 years ago, right around this time with uh, Steve Bellisteri, and he had a DUI two days before the game with Illinois, which had they beaten Illinois and they went on and beat Michigan the next week, as everybody remembers, they would have won the Big Ten Championship and probably gone to the Rose Bowl that year. But, uh, you know, again, um, you know, Coach Tressel at that time suspended him for Illinois and then uh, had him dress for the game at Michigan, but he didn't play because Craig Grinzel did such an outstanding job. And then he dressed for the uh, – the bowl game against South Carolina, and when things didn't go well, they put him in there, and he sparked a big comeback, but they still lost the game. So, yeah, that was kind of how that was handled years ago. But, again, um, this seems to be the standard right now, one game. Yeah, another debate has been, does the amount matter, meaning the blood alcohol content, the blood alcohol level? And I say, of course it matters. I mean, this is why the law has different tiers, you know, of levels of OVI or levels of DUI. I believe if you blow over a... .17, it's automatic jail time or a more serious offense. So even the law agrees that the amount matters. To use your example, Steve Belisari, he was found passed out at the wheel. He blew a .22, nearly three times the legal limit. And I know Ohio State's university policy has changed since 2001, but as you mentioned, he was only suspended for one game, really suspended for two games, because as you mentioned, he made the trip to Michigan but did not take a snap in that football game. I completely believe that the amount matters. It sounds like you come down in agreement on that, Steve. Yeah, I think so. Um, again, um, he is 20 years old. Um, I wrote a column, and, and it's out there now on the site, uh, today's edition of the Oval, where I talked about, you know, he is old enough to uh, go to war for our country. Uh, in 1987, at 20 years old, he would have been old enough to have a drink in the state of Ohio. I mean, the, the law was 19 for the longest time. And people just seem to accept that it should be 21, even though at 18 years old, you are considered an adult in our society. So there are some rights that it, that that some adults aren't given under the laws, which is, uh, you know, a, a basically a federal mandate for a national a drinking age of 21. So it is what it is. And, yeah, I'd say that, uh, you know, he, he wasn't flagrant, uh, perhaps, in uh, in in the blood alcohol content, but again, we don't know all the story that was involved, and in, you know what what was he doing prior to that, and uh, you know what what was the plan, where was he going, what was going on, 
And just one other thing that I throw in, at least in my column, is, you know, this happened on North High Street uh, near Hudson Street. Uh, there was a DUI checkpoint on High Street uh, late Friday night, early into Saturday morning, and he kind of got caught up in that uh, one way or the other. I think one of the things you have to think about is the campus area is a very high traffic area with pedestrians and students and staff members and to me it is it is somewhat a little bit more egregious when you're you know drunk driving on campus because somebody who is walking along minding their own business could have been injured or killed or whatever and thank goodness nothing like that happened but um again I think that all has to play into it what happens at Illinois? Uh, obviously, JT, assuming it's just going to be a one-game suspension, uh, Coach Meyer will clarify that today in his university release statement. He said he would be, Barrett would be suspended for the Minnesota game. It uh, didn't say he would definitely return for the Illinois game, but that was implied. I tend to think that Barrett will play against Illinois but will not start. Usually coaches do not start players their first game back from suspension. Uh, or maybe he'll just set out the entire Illinois game. Maybe to use the Belisari example, maybe he'll be suspended for one game and then dressed in the second game but not play. I tend to think, though, he's going to play a lot in that Illinois game to get him ready for that Michigan State game the following week where he will start, in my opinion. Where do you come down on that, Steve? Do you think Cardale has a chance to keep this job, or do you think uh, uh, JT's going to get it back at Illinois? Will JT get it back at Michigan State? How do you forecast this? Man, uh, I think we're going day to day right now, Dave. I think that uh, you know there was an incident, yeah, with basketball last year with Mark Loving, where he kind of got his hand slapped a little bit, and he was basically done mentally for the rest of the year. And I guess we just need to see how JT responds to this. I mean, the JT that played against Penn State, if you can tell me that that's the same JT that will show up when they play Michigan State in a couple of weeks, well, yeah. Throw him out there. Heck, let him start the game, I guess. But I would agree with your scenario. Obviously, out this week, uh, should get into the game against Illinois at some point. Illinois, you know, their season is just basically falling apart. They seem promising at one point, but, uh, you know, losing to, to Penn State 39 to nothing, they don't seem like they're going to be able to muster much of a fight, so, um, you know, I, I would think that it should be a lopsided game, and I would think that there would be a chance to get JT in there, but uh, between Urban Meyer, Ed Warner, Tim Beck, uh, they've got a situation on their hands, and they have to manage it because they are now going back to Cardell Jones in a pinch, and you can't very well throw him, you know, out, you know, in favor of JT Barrett, who made a made a major mistake. I mean, just a terrible. Uh, uh, lack of judgment in his point. And uh, so, I mean, they're in a very difficult spot. And I guess that if Cardale plays well, to me, it's going to be hard to get him back out of the lineup. Uh, but, you know, JT uh, played phenomenal against uh, Penn State and uh, also against Rutgers. So, um, man, it is going to be a very difficult situation for the to manage. And, I think it kind of comes down to how JT handles his business in the next two weeks. Uh, Is he contrite? Uh, Is he still sharp? Is he uh, ready to go when his time comes? And I think we'll just have to wait and see what the answers to that are. Um, He played great against Penn State, played great against uh, Rutgers, and looked like the guy that was going to lead them, you know, to the Big Ten Championship and possibly – back to the playoff and possibly win this year's national championship. But, you know, life intervened here. So I don't know what to say other than I think this is going to be a situation that has to be managed day to day going forward. I'll just give my take really quick. I, I think JT Barrett's going to be the starting quarterback when the chips are down this season. I just don't see a scenario where Cardale Jones is the quarterback down the stretch run. The only thing that would change that, I guess the scenario I, I could see is if something, if JT got hurt or if he had another off-the-field incident. So those are the only two things I think could change that. I think I just can't imagine the coaches saying, you know what, now we think Cardale is our best quarterback. They've made their decision. I think they were fighting it all along. I think Urban Meyer all along preferred JT Bear as a starter. So... 
stands for any injury to Barrett or any more off-the-field incidents, I think he will get the job back uh, at the very latest by the Michigan State game. Great stuff no, out of Steve Hellwagon. As well. Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead. Give your, go ahead. I, I, think that's a very, I think that's a very valid point, but I think you also have to manage Cardale through this too because, you know, for everything people have said, oh, he's on Twitter, oh, he's talking about Ronda Rousey, all this, all that, you know, going to the Indians and going to a celebrity softball game and, you know, whatever and all this. You know, he by and large has kept his nose clean. And I think that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be watching to see how Urban Meyer handles this. This is the ultimate case of, you know, does the good of the group, does winning a football game uh, overcome, you know, the idea that, that you got to toe the line. And I think they're walking a real tough, tough line here with this because, you know, Cardale is – somewhat capable i mean he's been kind of he up won a national down, title but, yeah 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 he, he is so i mean it's not like he's chopped liver it's just he didn't play well at indiana in the red zone and lost the job basically so you know i i would agree with what you're saying in a perfect world but we got to see how jt responds to this too i mean if if this is thrown him for a loop mentally then which i doubt it has because he seems like a very solid citizen on the whole then, um, yeah, then he should be back in there in some large role. But uh, as I say, I say just wait and see and see how it goes. It is nice, though, when something like this happens and the quarterback you have to turn to is a guy that, oh, just led you to the national championship like 10 months ago. That's a pretty good a situation luxury. for college teams. That's usually, that usually is not the case in college football. So, and then you have a guy named Braxton no. Miller that uh, maybe uh, if things really went south, Braxton could be your quarterback. Maybe not throw very much, obviously, but they have some options here, kids, and uh, it's a Buckeye Nation problem. So great stuff out of Steve Hellwagon as always. Steve and I will be at Urban Meyer's press conference today. 11.45 a.m., we will talk to Coach Meyer. And then after that, we will get Ed Warner, we will get Kerry Combs, and we will get some players. So we will have wall-to-wall coverage on the site today. Thanks again to Steve. Thanks to you for listening to the show. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. Take it away, best damn band in the land. Bye.